Hey folks, um, hey Tom. Looks like yeah. we have a small group today. Yeah. Is there a holiday in the world somewhere going on? Affecting us maybe? Nothing listed in my calendar. The main main European countries that I do with. Well, um, other than uh, the task for documenting the process for publishing CNFS practices, what do we have today to discuss? That's all I could see from last week you need to put in through. Hi, Victor. Hi, Oliver. Hi. Hello, Taylor. Good morning. All right. Uh, anything else to add to the agenda? Nothing for me, thanks. Did someone say something in chat? No. All right. That's nice. Okay. Taylor, I don't know if it could be a good time to check um, the discussion topics on the GitHub uh, page. Maybe we can just take a look and see if there is something that we can um, bring to, to the table. All right. We can get started on this first one as far as documenting the process to publish the best practices. Um, last week kind of went through quickly with a few things, but didn't organize all of it. Um, let's see. I don't know. This might be helpful though. What is the process? I mean, requesting people to start by understand the mission statement might be a good idea. Oops, not just one. 
Will that work? All right, what else do we have? I know that at one point there was some slides. So let me try to see if I can pull that up that we're doing this introduction. But I'm not seeing anything in the repo for the process. I'm going to hop in and start add the stuff when I create the structure while I'm looking for the, the slides. Introduction. Let's see, what is it? CNF working group. I think it was with Jeffrey Salins and Ian for maybe for KubeCon a year ago or something. I don't know. This is not. No. On Gina Fortin. All right, and I have found them, but this could be an old copy. Let's see if the process is actually in this.
Hey, look at that. No. No. It's very short. This may not be the right copy. Okay. Hey, look at that. Add new best defined use case supplemental. Okay, where does it say? Socialize an idea. There we go. We've talked about this many times. Let's do this though. I will change uh, instead of existing PRs for open PRs. I mean, minimal change. But... I think that's kind of um, part of just general co contributions versus a new one. What can you do? But yeah, socialize an idea. Okay. Yeah, but technically you cannot make a comment on a closed PR. So, or, or you can, can you? Open PRs? You can, actually, you can make comments on closed ones, but people may not see them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You can make comments and closed issues and everything. Yeah, that's true. Like, that doesn't make sense. Mm Make comments on it. I don't, I don't really want to say open new PRs to socialize an idea. I can just remove this if we want, as far as socializing the idea. It's probably not good to do the idea inside of a yeah, totally PR. All right, is that good enough? Let's see what this other was. Yeah, that's good. All right.
A1 is that too bad, isn't it? Oh, that's just gray. Gray. A GitHub issue. Seems like we should promote people, I mean, recommend people create GitHub issues for new practices that are being put forward. So once it's through the general brainstorming in all these other places, then create an issue and say, here's one, non root in containers or privilege equals false, recommended. I mean, could, could we add that to the list under item three? So do people have to start, you know, we can socialize and discuss within the GitHub issue itself. So if someone's got an idea for a best practice, you know, it's, I think it's valid for them to create an issue and it can be discussed within the issue. And then it's either taken forward with a PR or, or we decide as a group not to adopt it as a best practice. I'll put, how about like this then? Optional for these top ones. Yeah. So someone may, the reason why I have these others, sometimes that might be too, we should, um, it may be too general. We should secure the containers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. what do you mean? We're, we're not quite sure about the big Right. Practice. Don't allow privileges on containers. Okay, that sounds a little more specific, but what do you mean? Oh, we mean don't allow root. Okay, what about privilege equals true? What about, you know, running the runtime? privilege you know it's just on and on and on oh okay we can break it down each one of those sub ones should be their own issue but they may not be ready but if they are go ahead and create an issue yeah So Taylor, um, what what is going to be the criteria for open an issue versus open a PR? I mean, me from my perspective, when you create an issue, it's like so you're reporting something that you don't know how to do it. Like in this case, probably you are suggesting a topic that you don't know what is the best practice or like what is the use case, but at least you raise a hand. On the other hand. A PR is more like a, I have, I propose in this, this is my proposal. This is my, the, the best practice that I am proposing. And, and I just need feedback of that specific proposal. So, but in this case, uh, yeah. What could be the, the criteria choosing between an issue versus a PR?
A pull request is suggested changes to the repository. That could be like a whole set. It could be partial updates. You could have a um, a change to existing best practices or improvements. And the issue is to track larger amounts of that, or it's a higher level. So you create an issue and say, here's the best practice. Well, now what do we need to do? You have, maybe you, the, the PR is related to that best practice is adding a user story that provides context. Then you create another PR with the first draft of the best practice that references the user story. So you could have multiple PRs under one issue, but the issue is communicating where you're trying to head with the best practice. Okay. If it's a brand new best practice versus a, I mean, well, I'll just, I'm getting specific. I'm going to say in general, it's good to have an issue. And you look at the issue board to see what are the best practices that we have open? What are the best practices that we've closed? And if, you know, with tagging and everything, it's something that would pull in all of those versus the PRs could be all over. You could do spelling fixes across two or three best practices. So for example, one of the, the, the I don't know, best practice that I have in mind is um, try to avoid um, static IPs. Mm -hmm. So what could be the workflow? Like, should I need to start that discussion, first of all, in the in the discussion discussions uh, section, or like just going directly and open an issue, or, or all right. So, um, I I think it's partly a preference or opinion on that. <laughs> For myself, I see the benefit of having the entire process so that people can see how it fits together. And if you're stuck at any stage, you can jump in and help, you know, put it in there. If you don't know where to start, you know, many reasons. So have that process. And then I personally think it's okay to jump in anywhere that you can help. Um, as long as you recognize that, you know, there could be areas where there's missing stuff before or whatever else, you know, then I think it's fine. And then other people may want to, you know, the way that they, their process for work or the way they work through things, they want to start from the start and move forward. So if you already have, you know, this idea for this, uh, don't use static are, are you saying um, don't statically configure IP addresses in the CNF? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you may already have enough information to feel like you can create an issue and say, here's some references already. Yeah. I mean, you may already be ready to write the pull request because you have so much document. That's fine. If in that case, I'd say create an issue, have the quick summary in the issue, and then you know you could put a PR in to draft. Otherwise, if you don't have something drafted yet, then create the issue, add the summary. Maybe you know you add references and say, hey, here's a bunch of places where people have said you should not statically configure your IP addresses in your application. You should allow it to you know be dynamically assigned. Then you build all that into the issue. If you think it's a good idea, but don't have any content yet, and you'd like to get more people talking about it, and it's 
you know, you're just not sure, that's where to socialize the idea. Um, and you may, this is, this is kind of open between three and four. Someone may not know if it's a good idea and not realize that the whole working group already would have agreed with them. So they could have jumped ahead. It's okay then to first socialize the idea. The other way is you may think it's a great idea and believe everyone's gonna agree with you and you create an issue and people don't, well, it's okay. <laughs> we'll discuss it in the issue. So I think three and four are kind of open. Um, and I personally don't care if, I don't know if we're here yet, create a pull request. If someone jumps right to creating a pull request and they hadn't created an issue, I'm not going to be real unhappy. I'll, you know, pr I'll probably be just happy that we have some contributions. We may go and ask, can you go create an issue for this so that we can track any, you know, comments and complaints or any, whatever it is. The issue is good to have. Pull request comments and content in pull requests kind of disappear. People end up not going back as much to see a pull request as an issue. Like in an issue, you may paste in diagrams and images and other stuff, and that issue could end up getting referenced. The pull request is probably not gonna get referenced as much unless it was a big code change and someone was like, hey, look at this big change that we made and it was really important for this reason. Anyways, I hope that helped. No, definitely, definitely. I mean, you, you mentioned something crucial, I guess. I mean, especially if you have references, that's going to be the major distinction between socializing an, an idea and creating a, an issue in this case.
Taylor, are you saying something? Because you are on mute. No, I was just kind of focused, sorry. Um, going back and forth trying to put this together. So the what's underneath here that can be hidden, and that's a problem with the process, is someone could come in and just work on user stories and use cases, which helps. I don't want to stop someone from adding more use cases and user stories rather than say, you must start with an idea for the best practice if it's related to existing or it's, it's like a set of best practices, then that's fine. But I'm trying to keep it focused on the end goal of publishing a best practice. Because I think that's what, um, we haven't had as much forward momentum on. Um, and I think that's what Oliver, you were referring to last time was the process specifically for best practices and not all the other contributions. Yeah, correct. I kind of want to separate this. This, this line here, I think is important. And I don't, I want to be open to people working async. Um, on the other hand, we've had people throw stuff over the wall, so to speak, and then disappear and then expect it to go through and they're not you know helping with something they put there so i think there's there needs to be an expectation that if you're the one creating the pr then you should be providing the content for that Yeah. I think it's okay to create an issue and then not necessarily create the content. Yeah, agreed. Or a discussion item. Yeah. If, like, here's an idea. I yeah, saw it on the internet. Yeah, exactly. But I agree that if you've created a PR, then we probably need to have some kind of stale, rotten life cycle states or something. If 
you know what I mean? Yeah. Responding to comments in the PR, merge suggestions when this is another thing where we end up getting stuck is there's a bunch of comments and sometimes even suggest edits and then they just sit there. Yeah. Um, Co-chairs, I'm just putting this in there. Um, it's not a hard rule written. Um, close out PRs, which have stalled no progress and submitter is absent. Maybe we can find like a like a GitHub action to do that. I have seen. Yeah, I'm, that's that's um, I'm totally fine with it, Victor. <laughs> you want to go do it? <laughs> we need to document whatever the process is before we automate it. Mm -hmm. Why are we automating it? Why do you put the effort in? And then if it sounds like we all agree this is a good thing and we can automate it, then I'm all for automation. We got focus elsewhere. Regarding this step, uh, does that mean that we are not going to check any PR if that is not included in the agenda? Or like, I mean, it's like highly recommended that the submitter add that to the, to the agenda to i mean because i guess usually we take a look of all the open prs so it's more like suggestion right if you want that your pr has some visibility uh, just add it into the agenda and we can discuss it in the next weekly meeting Um, I'm sorry, your audio like partially cut out for me, so I didn't oh, get that. No, no, no. Uh, well, the thing that I was saying is like, um, for me, this, uh, the, 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 um, the sentence regarding the, adding the, the PR in the, in the agenda seems more like a suggestion, right? Because essentially every single week we're going to discuss all the open PRs and even when they are not included in the agenda, right? So, so one way to increase the chances to merge that PR is adding that in, into the agenda to, to make sure that it is going to be discussed, right? Or, or that means that we are not going to discuss the PRs even when they are open if they are not included in the agenda, so. Oh, we can definitely discuss them. This is, so I'm putting it in here as part of the process for publishing new best practices. Okay. This is separate from what will the working group do to run the weekly meetings or anything else. There's overlap between all the work that we do, but what is the process if someone is coming in and wants to publish? So on accepting or rejecting at some point, so there's a, there's a PR saying, here's a best practice, okay? So what do we do on the step for acceptance or rejection of that PR? Well, we need to review and discuss it. And I'm putting submitter, please add, 
I'm adding this in here because I want, and this is like a note. I mean, this, this is all of these steps we need to clean up and eventually I think publish in a document on the repo. But right here, I'm putting it here because I want people that are submitting ideas to actually be present. Here's your pull request. We'll then add it to the agenda, like proactively add it. So it's on the next meeting. And then you're mm -hmm. saying, here's the night or whenever they're going to be able to join next, add it there. Yes, you or I or Tom are going to go through and go, hey, there's a new pull request. Let's discuss it. But if that person that submitted doesn't even show up, we're not going to make as much progress. So that's why I want comments like this. All right. For people that are proactively trying to move stuff forward, we probably don't need all those extra little words. These words are for the people that either don't know or haven't been actively helping. Does that make sense, Victor? Oh, no, yeah, that definitely, definitely makes sense. I'm being explicit about the parts that I think you and some other folks that are already contributing would take for granted. One, one thing we could do is um, maybe just create a dead simple pull request template. So when a new pull request is created, the question is asked of the person creating it if they've added it and a link to it to the upcoming meeting agenda, just as a trigger. As well as having it in something like contributing file. So in the, um, have it where they're gonna see it as they're moving through the process? Yeah, so have it in the contributing file or whatever file we've put this process in. But on that specific point about adding the PR to the upcoming weekly agenda, um, we could create a simple pull request template so that when a pull request is created, there's a, there's a, a text in the body of the pull request asking them to add a link to the pull request to the meeting agenda. Sounds good. Um, so there's a two. Uh, there's a lot of places that we can do it. So part of it is in the pull request template. Yeah. We can actually add, and I don't know if it's in here. Um, yeah, it'd be in. The, and there is. See this. So the, this stuff is not going to be visible. These these comments won't be yeah. visible on the final. But the, you can actually put something in here, like as a reminder, after you submit this, please go add it to the, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then you can have the automation as well as part of the uh, workflows. So we can, you know, have something here that maybe, I, I don't know what's possible on the GitHub, but if, if it says you're, you're, um, PR has been created. Please go do this. Would be good as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, if I remind correctly, there is a way to create a message for first-time co contributors. So yeah, we can also add that. I'm just, I'm going to say respond to contributions, respond to first contri contribution.
All right. What else? Well, in terms of doing something about this, um, there's, I think, quite a lot of what you've listed there is in the contributing file already, but maybe over different sections. Um, is it worth a couple of us having a look at that file and see if we can make it simpler to understand especially those top top three or four points. Yeah, I don't even want to say it must go in the um, contributor document. Um, the contributor document may be more general contributions, but we can have just a section creating best practices. Oh, okay. Whatever, wherever it makes sense to put it in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's possible that we want something like a, you know, just put something under the docs folder for that specifically. Here's the process outlining. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Um, yeah, this is kind of a high level general where to contribute, you know best practices so like this one what to contribute we could have this go directly to something see this says cnfs practices it's going to the what would be the list here's the template we could have a a link here that says process for contributing best practices and then you click it and it brings you to a new doc or it could bring you to a section in here whatever whatever makes sense okay. um code contributions yeah, okay, we say where to go. So this is kind of put them off to that. How to talk in the meetings. Yeah, I think this one's pretty good if you're going in and saying, I don't know how to do this. Like I've never created a PR. Well, we have some general info on that. Yeah. Probably need to link over to the GitHub docs for how to create a PR, stuff like that. So shall I create an issue um, for documenting that that you've just listed in there? Yeah, if we don't already have it, we may already have it. If if not, then yes, please. I can't, I can't see one though. No. All right. So Taylor, uh, usually uh, when before creating any pull request or issue, uh, there is an step which uh, verifies if the if the pull request is, it is there, like a something like a make sure that there is not an existing PR discussing the same thing. I don't know if you want to mention that as part of the steps? Sure.
How's that for some info around existing best practices? Sorry, I'm on the mute. I think that's a good qualification, yes. We're not going to cover all cases. We're going to put what <clears throat> we think is going to help um, us and help guide people. And then we should set our expectations that people aren't going to always read and they will do open stuff anyways. Some people are going to ignore it and do what they want. Um, and we also want to not lock things down so much that we block people that legitimately are trying to help move stuff forward. Yeah. So there will be a requirement to manually review and talk through with folks to try to move things forward or sometimes repeat and say, yeah, we've talked about that. Here's all the references on why we didn't do it. I just expect to do that sometimes. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. I've got to drop for my next call, I'm afraid. All right. Um, yeah, we'll stop here. I feel like there's something after this, maybe published to the, um, there's a publish to best practice list, review and get buy-in from the Stanford group and co-chairs, add to the best practice list. TBD, I don't know what's next. So there's probably a few more things. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Tata. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.